It looks disturbingly similar, but it is not the same. What we have here today is an old school classic at this point, and a very clean one other than the screen, really. Okay, I take that back. This is a Lenovo R61. It was actually pretty darn popular, and with people who collect older computers, the ThinkPad R series is still pretty popular today. They were thick and heavy, but very well-built computers. Anyway, this computer has been in service for a very long time, and unfortunately, the CPU fan has completely failed. In fact, I don't know if the battery works. I haven't tried it just on battery, but let's see if we can see the actual error that we're getting. Battery works, but it's very, very dark. Can we get some more brightness? Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But uh, if you can see it at all, that says fan error, and it just shut off. So the CPU fan isn't blowing any air. Because the CPU fan isn't blowing any air, and because I've blown it out and done some tests, I know that it needs this replacement fan. Easily sourced online. I got mine off of eBay. I don't remember exactly how much it is, but if you find a CPU fan for more than 20 bucks, you're probably doing something wrong. These battery latches can be a little grouchy, but as usual, the battery has to come out first. Now, the only bad thing about these older computers is that unlike newer designs, the older ones have a nasty habit of using a lot of screws in a lot of places, so getting into them is a much bigger pain than newer machines where you take all the screws out of the bottom, do a little prying, and everything inside is reachable. This is a different ball game. Back in the day, for uh, businesses and academia at least, these Lenovo R series units, um, they were they were pretty they were pretty popular for contracts to get bulk computers, and they were designed to be repairable, but they were designed to be repairable by 2000s standards, not by 2010s or 2020s standards. Now, I'm just taking out the screws that have a keyboard logo on them. These, uh, these various screws here, I'll see if I can show you. Um, there are keyboard logos. This is a keyboard drip logo, which there are no screws that go here. This is, if you spill water on the keyboard, it comes out this hole. Yes, the keyboards are designed so that if you spill something, the spill floods out under the computer rather than being stuck in the keyboard and destroying it, or at least that's the hope. So any given one of these that has the little the little grid looking thing, that is the keyboard. And that means you need to take that screw out to get access to the keyboard. Now, they don't necessarily go into the keyboard, uh, which you're about to find out. I've taken all of the keyboard marked screws out of the bottom. You will soon find that this is not good enough because when you open the unit, you will see that you can't pull the keyboard up without taking this palm rest up first. Now, the nice thing about these older Lenovo's is that once you take these keyboard access screws out of the bottom, the palm rest is here, the RAM is right here, so doing a RAM upgrade, super easy. Um, if you pull this palm rest connector up, you'll notice that the palm rest connector here is actually very different from what you're used to on older computers, where older computers normally have these connectors where you have to flip something up and there's a very thin, somewhat fragile cable. This palm rest connector is a different beast entirely. If you look here and you look at this, you'll see it's designed so that you can put your finger down. If you get it lined up properly, you can just push down and it will click and it's very simple. It is very easy for a not very skilled user to get one of these parts and replace it. 
because they snap in and out very easily. This is what Lenovo was known for and IBM before that in the 2000s. Their units were designed to be repairable and all of these are what they call field replaceable units or FRUs. Here's the keyboard. You'll notice same thing right down here. The keyboard connector pop comes right up way easier than even the latest model of computers. It's designed to be workable, but the problem is that with these nice, thick, easy to connect connectors, you also are stuck with a computer of a certain thickness. You cannot have today's thin and light computers if you have these very, very serviceable connectors. And this is where things get ugly. As you see, we've taken out the keyboard, we've taken off the palm rest, but we need to get to that fan right there. Now, if you look at this fan, which will replace it, you can see very, very easily that, well, all of this has to come off. And this is where the problem with older computers comes into play. Getting into an older computer sucks. Getting into a new computer isn't exactly the easiest thing in the world, but once you're past this serviceable area where the RAM and the wireless card and the CMOS battery, and I'm gonna guess that's a dial-up modem. Yes, a dial-up modem. Once you're past things that are in this serviceable area, you now have to completely take all of this stuff off. This whole top has to come off. We have to get to that fan, so everything on the top's gotta go. What does that mean? Well, first of all, look here. There's a screw over here. Let's take it out. And of very frustrating note, every single one of these stinking screws has to be something different. They just had to do that, didn't they? Yes, all of these screws are something different. So can we get into this now? I don't know, but it doesn't look like we'll be able to get into it now. Look, these speaker cords here, they merge into this one connector. So, well, there goes the whole ease of service thing. Once you're not doing RAM, Wi-Fi, or a dial-up modem of all things, the serviceability has gone out the window. So these speakers clearly go together. The metal that covers the CPU fan is there. I see another screw right here that potentially also is involved. The Wi-Fi antennas appear to be blocking it. So let's get those, let's just go ahead and take them up. Also, on these older computers, the Wi-Fi antennas on older machines like this are actually much thicker. These are very big and easy to pop on and off, unlike a newer system, which is a major pain. I don't like newer systems because of their complete lack of ease. Um, Wi-Fi antennas are very small. Their connectors are very small now, so they're very difficult to get on. Well, they're easy to get off, but they're very difficult to reattach. So I'll get that out of the way. It looks like this also has to come off. There are just several screws and I'll go back over them really quickly just to show you what I have removed. Um, one reason, no, where'd that screw go? I, I seem to have lost it inside the unit. Hold on. That, there we go. Yeah, it's sad how easy that actually is. So what I've done is removed this, this, and there's one, two, three back here. Now, will this come up now? I need this speaker bar to come up now. Unfortunately, it is still being held in place and it seems to be held in place by the display, which is definitely not what I want to have to remove. Now getting the display off is going to be a much bigger pain. Oh, boy. No, it shouldn't be held on by the display, and yet it's not just lifting up, is it? So are there any screws here that could be holding it in? Well, it doesn't really look like there should be, but there could still be. There's a screw here that may be involved. Let's go ahead and take it out. There's a screw here that could also be involved, but those are too short. There's actually no way that those two screws were involved. 
So let's just put them back for now so that I don't have to keep track of them. This is the other really annoying thing about older laptops like this. If you do a disassembly, you can't intuitively figure out how it went back together, um, how you took it apart and so on, because the way that they're put together, everything is pretty non-obvious. It's, you know, a bunch of different screw sizes, a bunch of weird locations, and it almost feels like a gamble when you reassemble them. Back in the day when my computer shop was young and had many employees, we actually would get pretty annoyed if the person who did a disassembly did not reassemble the same computer. Because if they did this, they were essentially screwing whoever it was that had to ultimately do the reassembly work. So this looks like it should not be stuck. This comes up a lot, but yet it still seems to be stuck. So, and I will, uh, I know that I'm supposed to be this guy that knows what he's doing, but I will remind you, and that was a very long screw, I will remind you that I have not disassembled a computer like this one in an extremely long time. Uh, to the point that uh, I have no idea what I'm doing anymore. That might sound a little crazy. Why are you listening to some guy who has no idea what he's doing anymore? Well, when was the last time you saw a machine with a Windows Vista Basic sticker? So clearly, one of those screws I pulled on the bottom was what was holding it. We'll find out soon enough which one it was. Although it is still stuck for some reason. So, I think there may still be one more in the corner. And yes, there is a pair of screws down here. I'm going to pull one in the hopes that it is the last one standing. That is pretty long. All three of the screws I had to pull to get this thing loose are different lengths because, you know, screw me, I guess. So it's still stuck. Yeah, it's still hung in that corner for some reason. So let's pull the last screw in the corner just to be sure. I know you can't see what I'm doing. You'll just have to trust me that it's not fun. I can actually feel that this is the screw, the very last corner screw back here in the back, if you can see that at all. Yeah, you can't really see it, sorry. Uh, right, it's not coming out, but it doesn't really have to. Um, as long as it backs out enough, we can get this out and everything will be fine. Yeah. There it did. There it went. It came out. Okay. It's still a little stuck because that's under there, but come on, get out. Get out of there. Well, I'm not entirely sure why it's stuck at this point, but I'm going to flex some things and see if I can get it to come out anyway. To be frank, I don't care at this point. I will leave it there because if I can just get this thing out, this heat sink assembly out, then I don't care. I will be more than happy to just grab that and let this dumb thing hang out all it wants because I don't want to deal with it. So let's go ahead and get this heat sink assembly out. So we've got a CPU here. Are these screws removable? Oh dear God, they are. Well, that's more screws to keep track of. This thing is stabbing me in the stomach over here. So that's just further complicating things for me. <sighs> Let's get another one here. Uh, oops, come on, don't be mean. There you go. Now these screws aren't coming out. So that's even more frustrating. Oh, that one did, but this one's stuck. Why is this one stuck? Who knows, but I got it out anyway. All right. These silver screws on this bracket also have to come out. And they, of course, are different from the other ones because, you know, why wouldn't they be? Why not make everything different just to make all the reassembly work even more of a pain? Because, you know, nothing says I'm designed to be field replaceable like everything being different such that you have to keep meticulous track of where the hell everything went. Oh, and it's stuck under this, so this screw's got to come up, and I bet you, I bet you the thing that was covering it 
suddenly becomes a lot easier. Oh, that's actually very, very tight. Um, that might be a bit of a problem for me. That is extremely tight. So I might have to take this display up after all, at least partially. That screw holding the display in did not want to come out. And um, that's interesting because I see the slightest red thread lock on it. So it shouldn't have been that that difficult. But yep, there it goes. There, look, the corner was jammed under that. What a terrible, terrible design. I don't know who came up with it, but that was stupid. And I find it difficult to respect whoever engineered this crap because I shouldn't have had to go through that. Now, why is this stuck? This is another hallmark of these older designs is that they just, they seem like they should be serviceable, but they're actually really difficult. And just to make things 10 times worse, I'm actually seeing this heat sink paste in here. Now, this is some stuff I bought over 10 years ago. This stuff, it came, I uh, got a, a bulk pack of syringes with this stuff. And this stuff is bad. I'll be right back. I need to get a paper towel. Hang on just a minute. I was not aware at the time, but I know today that this heat sink paste is absolute trash. It does not work very well. It has a low thermal conductivity. Great, and one of these things pinged out. That's wonderful. It has a low thermal conductivity which does me zero favors. There's some kind of retention ring that popped out. Oh, you have got to be kidding me. And there's like a, there's a spring too? Oh, come on. Really? Ah, okay. Well, everything just has to be difficult, so you're getting to see it all uncut. Anyway, this paste is not great. It was very cheap on eBay 10 years ago, and it was not great. Um, I no longer buy cheap thermal paste. I buy large packages of good thermal paste. In particular, the thermal paste I've basically settled on is this Arctic Silver 5, which, of course, is out of focus because I have manual focus turned on. But here, Arctic Silver 5, I buy it in these, I think, what is it, 8 ounce or something? 12 grams, 12 grams of Arctic Silver 5. You can focus, I'll let you. There you go. That's what I use today. Get all the old stuff off, which is not too difficult because the old stuff doesn't stick very well. Get all the new stuff on once the old stuff's off. The old stuff looks very shiny, but I don't believe it's conductive, so it's actually pretty easy to remove and not worry about. There we go. This one also needs to, uh, yeah. Yeah, let's get all this paste off as much as we can. We'll replace it with some Arctic Silver 5 once we confirm that the fan actually works. Because yeah. I don't want to waste Arctic Silver 5. That's just ridiculous, but... At the same time, this stuff is really, really bad, and I know that we can't keep it in here. So, let's go ahead. Uh, I can already tell that, yeah, the little manual blowout of that. So, we've obviously been in here and replaced the thermal paste before. Now, that fan, I'm trying to turn it by hand, it is not working very well. That fan is very, very seized. The bearing is shot. It was probably making a horrendous amount of noise prior to this failure. Oh, so we need to get this fan replaced and, oh boy. So I'm not entirely sure exactly how that's gonna go, but I can see that these screws are very, very tiny. So, what are we going to do? Let's try a Phillips Zero, see if we can get these up. And that is exactly what it is. It is a Phillips Zero. Um, I'm running out of places to do this, but I'll try to do it where you can see it. These tiny, tiny screws. In fact, if you want, um, I'll show you closer. There's one here. There's one here that I've already removed. 
one here. At a minimum, that's what has to come out. They're very tiny and easy to lose, so be very careful. Get all three out. They are these little self-tapping screws that go into a plastic shell, so they don't like to let go once you remove them, which is frustrating to say the least. This fan is sort of trapped in this shell here. <sighs> yep, yeah, it just keeps getting worse too. So it's also attached, this plastic shell is attached to this metal plate. There's four right here. Four, count them, four, four, four. There you go, four screws to remove to get it off here as well. Yep, and these screws also do not want to come up. I don't think we've replaced this fan before. Something I actually should have done earlier is check and make sure that the fan connectors match. And uh, they look like they match close enough, so I'm not too worried about that. It is entirely possible that I got the wrong fan, which is why I have to look. It wouldn't surprise me if I got the wrong fan. Sometimes these units will have the same model number, but surprise, they have a different fan. Unfortunately, I did not want to dig this deeply into here to see if there was a part number, and it's entirely likely that that will be my downfall in this case, as I can see that there is clearly a difference. There is very clearly a difference between these two parts. Now, I can make it work, but I'm going to have to separate these pieces of plastic from one another to do it. This fan is identical, but it also is not. Um, it does not attach the same way. So I'm not entirely sure how I'm supposed to get this fan to go in here and stay in here properly. Um, let's see how bad the situation really is. So if we, let's just kind of hack this together. If we just sort of slap it together in the most naive way possible here, this is just the most naive assembly method. We'll put these two items here and they just kind of sit here. There's no duct anymore, so that's kind of a problem. That doesn't match, also a problem. So if we do that, I will have to do some custom, let's be honest, probably taping to get things to go where they belong. It's going to sit down here somewhere. The question is, what is this? Is this, that almost looks like a screw, but it's actually one of the springs to the battery. So how is this going to fit together in the overall scheme of things? If I shove this down here. I need to see if I can make this work in some way because I only have the one fan. I'm not going to get another one if I don't have to. I need to make it work. But, you know, it's entirely possible that it just won't. Because what you'll notice is this setup here, this has to go here. Yeah, I don't know about that. This fan is so seized, though. I wonder. Good lord, you can even see it. Look at look at how burned this is. This is prime burned out territory right here. That is one charred fan. And there is no way that's ever going to work again. So let's go ahead and rip it out and see what we can make shift here. 
get this old spindle off of here. There's no point. There's just no point. It's burned to a crisp. So, what now? What can we do? What can we do? Is it possible? Maybe we can fit this in here. This actually looks like it could go in here. Problem is that the actual fan assembly would need to go right there. And I don't think that's going to work. So, yeah. Don't think that's going to work. All right, we need to knock this out. This just needs to go. So let me get a tool. Let's rip, let's rip into things and see if we can make something work somehow. That broke surprisingly easy. I don't like it. It's a little too compliant for me. Makes me think things aren't going to work. Wouldn't surprise me if things didn't work, in fact. So, let's see. This, this is taped here, but it actually would need to go there. So let's go ahead and see if we can jerry-rig that in. We can always just epoxy it if it'll go. If everything just fits, epoxy is the way to go. But it may not just fit. And it wouldn't surprise me if it did not just fit. And it kind of looks like that's not going to happen. So, yeah, not so sure about that. We need it to go right there, but the metal is too much. So what can we do here? It looks like it's very difficult to hold this stuff. So it looks, it looks disturbingly similar, but it is not the same. So we know that this shell is just flat out not going to work. Now here's where things get a little ugly. If I do want to reattach this. I need some material to attach it to, but this plastic won't just shave off nicely. So what to do about that? I honestly don't know. But it would be very, very nice if we could just trim all that plastic cover off. Don't know that that's going to happen. But, but... I'm going to give it a shot. Possibly slice my hand off in the process, of course. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Mm, yep, there we go. I knew it. I knew it. It is not easy. Yeah. Sometimes the customer's paying for your blood. Try to score it a little more gently this time and see where it goes. Maybe we can... Mm. Give it a nice slice there, and let me go ahead and just lock it out. Hmm. I should 
probably go get a bandage, shouldn't I? <laughs> ah. Let's see if there's any way to get this to pop at the score. I doubt it. But if this can be broken right where the scoring was there, we can crack it right there. Oh, it looks like it might actually work. Let's go ahead and see if we can get this to rip off. At the score mark, that is actually working pretty nicely. Let's go ahead and get most of the plate off there at this point. I don't think I scored it quite enough there. Come on, damn it. Be nice. Gets that out of my way. What's next? Oof. Well, that's the end of that. Maybe I can fix it later. We'll hang on to it for now. Just to see what happens. But, yeah. <clears throat> I have epoxy, so I can glue it back together. Quite literally glue it back together. If that's what it takes, but... I don't know that that's gonna work, so we'll see. All right. Nipping all the little pieces off. That one fell, let's make sure it doesn't fall in the computer. All right. So now, with the way that this is set up, what is it going to look like? This fan goes here. That clip area is still going to be a problem. Let's cut it off, or bend it off, rather. This whole area right here. Let's get it bent up like that, and then bend the whole thing until it breaks. Pretty easy. Okay. So now, this goes here, this goes here. All right. Well, I gotta admit, that's looking a lot better than I expected it to. Um, I still need to see if this part, if there's some way I can salvage this and epoxy it back. But if it won't play nice, I can possibly still work around it. Yep. Yep. Remember when I said I may not have scored it enough? I believe that's what's happening right here, right now. I believe it is not scored enough, therefore it won't snap. I need this top layer to break off and it's just not doing it. Come on, there you go. It's starting to work at least. Just start putting the pieces over here. Okay. Okay, 
Well, that looks awful. But, but, it is possible. that it may yet work to my advantage. So, I think we're on to something here. Um, let's see. This might actually work. I know it's shocking, but it might actually work. Okay, let's see what we can get. Let's pull this through, because it ain't gonna work that way. All right. So this goes here, this, the fan goes that way, this goes this way. Okay, so I've got it upside down, that's why, and yeah, okay, just getting my bearings on this. So if the fan is here, there's actually a little area right here for it to go. So if the fan is here, and this is here, mm, okay, this actually may still need to be scored further, but hold on, hold on, but this wire goes here, the fan moves around, but I think a little clever epoxy job and we may be able to not deal with it. Okay, <clears throat> let's see if it'll fit this way. If it will, I'm just gonna epoxy it as is and that'll be the end of that. Let's get this in here. Well, that's gonna be tough without the fan already attached, isn't it? Uh, that's kind of the problem there. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Yeah, um, it looks like that will work. That will work. It's a bit of a pain, but it will work. Good, okay. So we've determined this setup, though stupid, will work. We just gotta find a way to attach the fan to the base when it's done. Um, but yeah. It, it will ultimately function, and that's all I care about. So, let's put it all back together poorly and uh, see where everything falls. All right, this needs to go here. I am opting to simply leave the other plastic that broke off. I'm not going to put it back because I don't feel like it. The trick to this is actually going to be the plastic bonding epoxy that I use, which I'll show to you in a little while if you've not seen me use it. This one really sucks. Whenever you get a part that's not quite right, it's always a bad day, but this one in particular has, uh, has gone rather poorly as these things go. I mean, even as these things go, it's not gone well. <sighs> so, let's see. The fan will probably shake if I don't do something about that. Actually, I can see... Yep, there's a little piece right here that didn't break. Yep, that's exactly what it is, too. There's just one little fragment right here that's still kind of in the way, and that's what's been getting in the way of this fan. 
So let's deal with it right now. Right now. All right. That's better. Now, let's see what we got. Okay. All right. The fan will be fine as long as we can secure it properly once everything is all said and done. So we have a solid plan in effect here. Now we need to get some epoxy. Give me just a minute. I take a cotton swab, cut the end off, discard it. A sticky note, just because it won't move, and Loctite plastic bonding epoxy. This is the stuff that makes the world go round, or at least my world. And I don't need much for this, because we're bonding almost nothing for this job. This is the most trivial amount of bonding I'll ever need. So, all we're really doing here is getting the epoxy in place so that the fan doesn't move. And that's it. it it's really nothing else. There is no amazing function to it. It is just, we need this fan to not go anywhere, and that's it. Once it's down there, it needs to stay down there and not move. So the strategy for that is as follows. We get a big gob of epoxy. We put it on the fan. Don't know where. Kind of don't care where. As long as it works. But we do have to put it somewhere that it's going to stick. And it looks like down here is the most likely place for a giant gob of epoxy to find a home. So that's where we're going to put it. This whole thing kind of sort of has to go together as a unit here. And it's not going to stay together. But it does not have to. Now, I need to also apply this thermal paste properly because this isn't coming back apart. This thing is just going to be one and done so a lot of thermal paste has to go down relatively quickly and that's the end of it because we're not going to pull it back up because we might rip the fan off and we don't want to do that if we rip this fan up it's going to be a bad day given how poorly whoever it was that worked for me put on that heat sink paste before Something tells me that everything's going to be okay, even if I don't have it all great this time. All right, there we go. There we go. Now, close therm. There we go. And this needs to find a home somewhere where it won't get injured. And we need to put back this one. Doesn't have a proper retention ring, but that's okay, because it doesn't need to. Put it back there. Is that how this one works? It is. So, that's pretty much the end of that. Alright, once it's all said and done, yep, I think we're going to be good. 
I don't know what just went by outside, but that was an interesting sound. Ah, it's a train. Of course it's a train. Why wouldn't it be a train? Okay. These funky brackets need to go back. I'm pretty sure that's the way they went. And, yeah. I hope that fan found a good home. I'll plug it up later. Right now, I just need to get this reassembled. Um, let's see. I don't really remember exactly where everything goes, so that's very unhelpful. Very, very unhelpful. But, alas, it will have to do. There we go. This epoxy's got to go. Let's get it out of here. <sighs> this one mismatched part has turned this whole job into a minor nightmare. But, there is light at the end of this tunnel. So... Let's see, what did we have going on? So, we ended up not putting the fan screws back. That's fine. I don't care as long as it all works. I'm looking around making sure I didn't misplace any screws. Don't think I did. But uh, some of these screws over here look a little funny. So... Yeah. I just want to make sure everything goes back where it actually belongs. I think these are it, and they are. So, I didn't lose them. I just wasn't paying good enough attention. Switch back to the number one bit, because the number zero doesn't fit these heads, and we'll strip them. Yeah, if you can't see, now you can. Look at that. These long screws go here, and here. And here, yeah, it's all going together pretty well, actually. I'm wondering when something horrible is going to happen. Hmm. Yeah, now, actually, I'm noticing, strangely enough, these um, the little holes where the plastics go for the fan, they actually are still there for two of the three screws. So I'm going to go ahead and put them back. Where did they go? They're very small screws. They're very easy to lose. But yeah, since the plastic is still there, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the plastic is attached. The third one, the plastic's gone, so we're just going to leave that be. But the epoxy will keep the fan from moving. So really, uh-oh, the trick is going to be making sure the fan doesn't scrape. And that's kind of going to be a problem, I think. Mm. See what we can see down there. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah, the fan is actually scraping a bit. That is easily the worst thing I've had to deal with all day. So my little jerry rig may not work out after all, which is going to upset me quite a bit. If that turns out to be the case. That uh, it's gonna if it's gonna scrape, we're gonna have to take it out. It is definitely scraping though, and I'm not sure why. But uh, we have to get it out before the epoxy sets, and that's easier said than done. So yeah. Mm. 
yeah it's definitely scraping at this point well is it these two screws here that's doing it or is it something else should I perhaps not have put them back are they affecting it in some way who knows it wasn't scraping earlier but it's scraping now so I'm not really sure what to do but I have to do something so let's tear into it again what a pain what an absolute effing pain gotta tear into it again before it dries now the friggin pressure's on tell you what I have a limited amount of time to solve this so let's solve it and get it over with get it up get it up there you go get it up find out why it's not playing nice why are you not playing nice? I'm betting, I'm betting it has something to do with the metal right here. Oh, that screw fell out. The other one will too. If it didn't already, so let's grab it. Get it, get it, get it. Okay, that's three. Where'd the fourth one go? I know you're around here. Don't mess with me. Come on, I know you're down there. They're super long screws, you'd think they'd be easier to see. Apparently not. Well, this stuff's curing fast, so I don't have time for this. So we'll just do it the hard way. Yeah, nothing came out great. I don't know where that screw went, so that's just really fun. Oh, it's still in there. <laughs> okay, well, that explains a lot. All right, things are not going well at all. So I think that this metal on the end here is causing my problem. I think that that's causing the fan to scrape and I really need it off, but I don't have any way to make it go away. So I think the best I can do probably be Try and get more of this, maybe? Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know about that. Oh, boy. Yep, see, this is where things just get ugly. What is that? Where did that come from? I have no idea where that came from. I have no idea what part of the unit... Oh, I know where it came from now. It's the old fan. The old fan is being an evil, smelly ghost. Doesn't want to go away. But yeah, so I think the new fan is going to need a little bit more help finding a home than what I have given it already, so. It's got a neat little spot right there if it'll only stay in it. And then when this is down, it's still scraping. So, don't know. Don't know. Definitely don't know. It's definitely being grabbed down there. Yeah, it's getting caught because of this metal. 
all this metal around the edge. So, ah, there may not be much to be done about it, actually. I may just have to give this one up. Don't know. Don't know. Come on, get off of there. Oh my God. You know what? We're gonna, we're gonna go the executive decision route here and just start breaking plastic off until I think things will work because I don't have time. I just don't. I don't have the time for this nonsense. So we'll just make it all go away and hope that it ultimately works out for the best because it probably won't. But at this point, I can't really go wrong. I'm gonna have to order a whole new heat sink unit at the rate things are going. So I may as well just deal with it. All right, one more time for the record books. Let's try this. Put it down. Hopefully the stupid epoxy will actually stay put here. Maybe, maybe not, but I can't say I didn't try. And this needs to come up, up, back and up, you douche. Okay. Oh, this sucks, all right. Okay, okay. You suck. But that's okay. You don't have to be good. You just have to be where I want you. There you go. Nope. I don't think this is going to work. I think this whole situation is probably a bit terminal. I don't think that it's going to work. No matter what I do, I think it ultimately is doomed to failure. This whole project is pretty toasty. Even if I do get it in place, who's to say it won't flop right back out? So maybe it's time to give up on this this jerry-rigging and uh, buy, the, buy the right thing later. Looks like that's what we're gonna have to do. All right, well, so much for that. Maybe if I'm lucky, maybe I can wipe it off. Since it hopefully hasn't set too well yet. Mm. I think what I'm going to ultimately do is probably try to cut some of this metal off the edges here and uh, see if I can get it to go in once that extraneous metal is out of the way because it looks like everything should work if it weren't for some of this metal. So if I can get rid of some of this metal, maybe I can get it to work as well. Specifically the metal on this side, but yeah, I think that's a project for tomorrow. So I'm shutting it down. Oh Well, good night All right folks welcome back to hell otherwise known as day two of me working on this Lenovo with the wrong fan part so if you recall from what you probably just watched but what was last night for me this fan is not the correct part. What I actually needed is a black plastic shell that would go into this heat sink assembly, and that's not what I got. So I tried crushing the plastics to make it fit. I had to basically just surgically remove all of 
the plastics in the fan area so that this can sit here and so that the fan can sit here. And the plan was to attach the fan using epoxy. Now I had to wipe off the epoxy last night because it didn't work out. But today, since I have carved these edges off of this fan, I can now do what I was trying to do last night with this today. So let's go ahead and mix up another big fat bead of epoxy. This tube's getting really, really low to the point that I can't even back it off. But I'm fed up. I just want this over with at this point. So we're going to do what we have to do to get this stinking epoxy mixed up and under that fan and get it all mounted to where the fan will spin and do its job. This whole situation has been kind of a mess and unfortunately since I'm not doing this at night and I'm right beside the road you will probably hear some obnoxious vehicle exhaust sounds since it's basically peak hours of the day so yeah so what we're gonna do is if you just look over here we are going to epoxy come on don't focus on my hand you weirdo lock that focus we're going to epoxy this fan into place now i don't know exactly where it's going to land so to speak but i do know that i don't care very much as long as wherever it goes it stays I think this time a deviation from what I was trying to do last night I think I'm actually going to put some epoxy on the other end of the fan too and see how that kind of lines up hopefully that will attach the fan on both sides not just one so that this thing will kind of stay put and not move too much um, but it all kind of remains to be seen. I still have to pivot the heat sink assembly into place, which is way easier said than done. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's got to go down here. It's got to go under here. And once it's all in place, no matter what happens, this fan really needs to be able to spin freely. So let's get it centered if we can. Okay, and let's screw some things down and see where it all kind of lands. Um, I somehow, I don't know how, but I somehow have lost the screw. Uh, not the screw, but the spring for this one side of the CPU. So. That's also going to be very interesting. I have no idea where it ended up. I probably should look for it, actually. I do not see it. So I'm going to assume that spring has been lost to the sands of time, and we're just going to proceed as if it's not even a thing that matters. Because right now, I just need this fan to be installed and to not scrape. I need this CPU fan to stay where it belongs without complaint, without making scratching noises. I just need it to spin freely. Easier said than done, obviously. But, uh, yeah. It's scraping right there. Who knows on what. But, the other thing I'm going to do is I need to run a quick test and see what happens. So let's plug the fan into some power here. Let's see if we can get a power cord of some sort. Uh, what do you take? This thing's an R61. It takes the classic Lenovo style round tip. So let's go dig one of those up real quick. Uh, I actually don't know for sure where the other end of my AC adapter is, so I've got to figure that out too, just to make things more difficult. Yeah, and I bet it's under all this stuff. And of course, it has the biggest ferrite bead on the planet, 
just to make it even more difficult. Power. We don't need no stinking power. Uh, I think I've actually made a boo-boo, and the power's right here, not right there. But, uh, power is on... Where is the power for this thing? I probably should have looked a little more thoroughly, huh? Alright, the power button is part of the keyboard assembly, which means we need to plug this back in to get the ability to turn this thing on. Turn it on, you scraping, you scraping. But what's it scraping on? I don't know. I don't know what it's scraping on. It sure ain't showing a fan error anymore though. That's cool, at least. Uh-oh, it's booting Windows. ruh -oh. That's not what we want at all. We do not want Windows to boot up. I just need the fan to be tested, that's all. I don't need Windows, I don't need any of this nonsense. Just need the fan tested, nothing else. So, what do... See, the problem is, with epoxy, the clock is ticking. This thing has a heat pipe for a reason, and it's not because it doesn't need cooling. So, let's find out what we're up against here. All right, that'll at least hold it down where things will cool. Uh, keyboard has a track point, so the computer's not crashed. So I've at least confirmed that much. Let's find out. This is tweaked. Okay. It could actually be an issue with the assembly itself. And that's what I'm starting to think, is that the fan assembly is the problem now. Maybe I've bent it in the process of doing all of this. All right, let's force shut this thing down, man. And let's get it back out of there, because I think that the fan may be a problem. We'll leave the keyboard plugged up just to make my life a little easier, but yeah. Okay, let's get, go ahead and get this back up. Those take a number one Phillips, not a number zero, so let's go ahead and pull this stuff out. I dropped that screw and I don't know where, and that's just going to make things even worse for me. Where did it go? Oh, I found the spring. That's interesting. Um, there's the screw. That pin pops out too, so we've got to be careful. Now, why is it why is it scraping? Well, that's not helping. Why are you scraping? Okay. Yeah, it does look actually like it is off. So Let's put it back on the spindle here. What does it do? If we spin it, it's free now. It's not scraping, but I do see where it is ramped a bit there. And that does pose an issue. So let's put it back, back in there and see what it does this time. Who knows, maybe we'll get a better result this time. Maybe not, I don't know. But uh, I do know that this doesn't like to go in when the fan's down there. At the same time, the fan gets kind of grouchy. So, as you can see, this is way more difficult than it really ought to be. But it's not scraping anymore. It was just that I had bent the fan bracket. And that's what matters, is that it isn't scraping. We really don't care about anything else right now. As long as it's not scraping, who cares? Not me. Definitely not me. Now this goes there. 
This is the bracket that goes here, and I probably should use this bracket to test, not that one. But let's go ahead and put a screw through that there. And also one through this here. This is a number zero. I think we might be able to get away with it this time. This might actually work. And unfortunately, I'm starting to become less precise due to uh, my panic over this epoxy. It sets pretty quickly, um, at least in terms of the amount of time that you spend working with this stuff. So you don't get very long to finish what you're doing. And that's the fundamental problem with it all. You don't get very long to do what you need to do. Okay, I think we might be okay. Let's plug it up, turn it on, and see what happens. Does it catch on fire? Probably. No scraping, no scraping, we're good. We're good, if we can just keep everything as it is. Um, I gotta be real careful here. Now, I keep losing parts. There's a little pin holder thing that was right there that isn't anymore. I need that. This spring goes here, and there's a thing that went over it to retain it. There it is. And it goes here. And then the bracket here goes here. And then these are zeros. I think it was very stupid of them to put these number zero Phillips screws and these number one Phillips screws on the same brackets. Foolish, to say the least. Because you need to use different screws for this. Man, okay. Well, that's all down. The fan is not scraping. Even if I move the heatsink assembly, the fan is still not scraping. So I think we are okay. Good, let's get this epoxy out of here. Thank God that's over. Now, because the epoxy will set, I am confident delivering this to the customer because once the epoxy sets, nothing bad's gonna happen anymore. By the way, just so you know, I used this utility knife to score the metal on the fan and then I used these pliers to rip it, but I didn't think you wanted to see that. It took a while and it was very annoying and uh, I, I don't wish that fate on anyone. So here we go. It works, but we need to put this disaster back together and boy, when I call it a disaster, I'm not kidding. You know, for a serviceable computer, this thing sure is annoying, just beyond belief obnoxious. So this corner actually goes under the display here. Very frustrating. Why would you design this this way? Like what kind of dumb drugs were you doing that you thought this was a good idea? And the truth is we may never know, but this has to go under there and I, it just popped out again. It's very, no see, it'll gladly pop out now, now that I'm in a situation where I need to reassemble this dumb thing. Of course, this is going to come out super easy now, where it wouldn't before. So I need to pivot this whole mess back in place. This Wi-Fi antenna nonsense, well, God knows where it's going to go, but I'll tell you where I think it can go. I have some ideas in that regard. So this covers up that whole general display area there. That goes there, that goes there. 
But if you watched this video earlier, you could see how this super duper serviceable computer was not quite as serviceable as it seemed. Yeah. So the Wi-Fi antennas are stuck under this piece of metal. Uh-huh. Real serviceable, that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. This is why I hated IBM and Lenovo back in the day, because their super serviceable computers were still extremely annoying to service. Even when you uh, supposedly had all of this easy to get into stuff, it really wasn't. And I have to pop the keyboard back up again. I'm actually leaving the machine on on purpose right now because I want to see that that fan is okay. If it's not okay, then the further um, the further along this process goes, um, the worse it's going to be to take it all back apart. So I'm not really keen on finding out the fan has an issue I need to deal with. In case you can't see that, it's down there somewhere. I don't want to find out the hard way that there's a there's an issue with the fan after I've reassembled half the computer. All right. In fact, I'm going to get that one screw in there, and then I'm going to go ahead, crunch some stuff down, put that put those those corner screws in. God Almighty, I don't remember which ones went where which absolutely just figures. But we'll just proceed from longest to shortest, and the longer it'll accept, the more likely it is that it's correct. And it turns out one of the longest screws does go to the corner. There we go. And then I'm gonna guess this slightly shorter screw goes to the hinge here, which it may not, but uh, you know, you can't see, can you? No, of course you can't, even though, yeah, yeah, I don't think that goes there. It's so frustrating putting these back together. All right, well, I have that one corner screwed down now. Let's, let's check this out. We have these thin screws here. I know for a fact from the disassembly that we did earlier, well, last night really, it doesn't help if you slap your own screw out of your hand, eh? Yep, don't know where that went. Oh wait, yes I do. It's right there. How cute. So, we know from last night's disassembly work that there were two silver screws right here. So that's where these are going. Alright, now let's route these Wi-Fi antennas. They need to go under this clip. That much is fairly obvious. Let's connect one here. Wi-Fi antenna connectors are always fiddly, but at least these are big, so they're a little easier to snap on because well, you can actually feel when they grab, which is more than I can say about some other ones. <clears throat> Let's see, there's plenty more thin silver screws. Let's put some here because I bet they go here. It seems to be a trend that these little silver screws always go into this gray area. So that's where I'm going to put them. Yay. And now that entire piece should basically be attached at this point. Uh, I don't remember if something comes up through there, but it looks like it does not. So how much do you want to bet that this goes here? See, I did the disassembly something like 12 hours ago, 13 hours ago, I can't remember. And already I don't remember how I did the work because it's just that bad. So anyway, these speakers need to be plugged back in and they need to be routed and all that. So let's get this tape out of the way. 
plug these this speaker connector in right by the RAM, route these speaker wires, which is a lot harder than it used to be because the tape is in the way. The tape that holds the wires is actually my enemy at this point, which is just lovely. Uh, a lot of it is worn out and useless at this point too. Therefore, it it's kind of actively working against me. And I'm not happy about it. But that is the way that it goes in the repair game. All right, come on, damn it. There you go. There you go. Okay. How much do you want to bet we end up with extra screws? Because that... That is just so typical of everything that I'm dealing with here right now. All right, all those screws are in place. We didn't remove the Wi-Fi card. These screws are in place. All right, looks like the keyboard goes back now. Fortunately, the way that this is designed, whoops, the keyboard is not too hard to put back. It certainly isn't hard to uh, take up in the first place pretty hard to screw up. Although, if there's a way to screw it up, I'm sure I can do it. I don't recommend doing things like this while the computer's on, so I'm pretty much actively defying what I'm telling you. Um, but I've also been doing this a lot longer, I'd bet. Otherwise, why are you watching this? If you already know how to do it, you don't need my help to screw it up. You can screw it up on your own. You can do just as good a job messing up the job as you'll do with me telling you to do so. Get my touchpad hooked up. Come on, touchpad, there you go. Ooh, it even dingled to let me know that it detected it. It's gotta go on a lip here and then it bites down there. This will probably sleep the machine and we're good. Now we have to put about a billion screws back in the base Oh dear, I think I know where some of those silver screws actually came from now. They came from back here. And there is one more here. Yep, I am remembering very slowly how to do this. So, <clears throat> the trick if you don't know how to reassemble this unit, the trick is to use the longest screws possible at first. Use the longest screws you can put them in the hole. If they don't go pretty much all the way in the hole, then you probably have the wrong hole for that screw. Uh, that's a short one. This keyboard here is obviously a long one. So we put a longer screw in. It's not grabbing, which isn't great, but it might just be that we need to hold the palm rest in place. And there it went. It grabbed. Now, same deal. Chances are very high that a lot of these keyboard screw holes take very long screws. So, yeah, sure enough, the longest screws are going through to the palm rest that's holding the palm rest and keyboard in place. All right, excellent. I have what appears to be one more long screw, but God knows where it goes. It could go anywhere. It could go here, it could go there, but it goes up here, surprisingly. Nice long screw. Pieces of plastic that I lost. Um, let's see, shorter screws. Where do they go? Well, I can actually see that there's one fat screw right here that probably goes to this hinge over here. Usually hinges have thicker screws or longer screws or both. So there's a good chance it goes right here. Um, however, yeah, oh, yep, it, that is that is the correct location for it. It is a hinge screw, and it, they're awfully tight. It was tight to remove as well. So, there you go. You have another keyboard screw here. You can tell that they're right on these just because they go almost all the way down, but you can tell it's not flush. And then... Do we have one more, perhaps? You know, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I wonder why that doesn't come all the way out there. Is it possible? Is it possible that that's just not 
actually where that goes? Yes, it is. It appears to go here. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe I never had a screw for that in the first place. And it sounds like all that encoding work I just was doing is done. All right, let's just get the rest of these little screws back in. I just want this to be done. Just want it done. Okay. And really, the only major screw left is this hinge screw. So it kind of has to be this. Yeah. Well, one way or the other, it feels like that's where it goes. So that's where it's going to go. Even if that isn't correct, it, it is correct in my eyes. Ergo, it's where it's going. So be it. In fact, I can actually see what appears to be its companion screw on the other side over here. So, oh, yep, I feel it grabbing right there. Yeah, all right, that's that. Let's put his battery back in. Lenovo, I have parts from another computer over here, so it is a little confusing. I'm sorry for that, but tis what it is. Uh, I have to work on more than one computer at once, so here we are. Okay. Yeah. About what I expected. I do see there's some wobble there. Given that that hinge is not held by very much, I guess I can't be too surprised. All right. Okay, good. I don't like that. I don't like that, but that is my problem, not yours. So, don't worry too much about that. It's not a big deal. And it seems that the fan is good, actually. I'm getting noise. I feel airflow. I'm gonna pull up my business website because there's still a bookmark to that on this computer. And that'll get us some nice, warm. Yeah, the fan's not pumping much because it's actually not that hot. So that's pretty cool. All right, well, fan repair is done. I'm going to call the guy and tell him to come get it. So successful R61 fan repair with the wrong part. Just goes to show sometimes if things kind of sort of fit and you have cutting tools and glue... You can make anything happen. Thus concludes another horrible repair on my channel. Thanks for watching and take care.